now that we've done some more detailed discussion of amplitude modulated signals, right? We discussed how amplitude modulated signals are different from double sideband suppressed carrier signals. We discussed how much power there is in the sidebands and the carrier, how to make uh, your system more efficient, and also just how generally inefficient AM systems are. Now that we've discussed these topics in amplitude modulation, let's continue by considering how you can demodulate the AM signal. Now recall, this is a bit of a culmination of some of the things that we've discussed now, because we've discussed uh, several times, right? Okay, amplitude modulation, it's not more that efficient, right? You're transmitting a bunch of carrier power that is not very efficient. But we've also talked about uh, how the AM is what is actually used, right? The double sideband suppressed carrier. Well, we don't actually really use that in real life. And that's not what the uh, engineers initially did. And right, that's because it was difficult to make that coherent wave. So if it's not efficient, if it's hard to make this carrier wave, uh, what is so special about amplitude modulation that makes it so that we continue to use it? And the answer is the, the way that we can demodulate it. So we're going to discuss the demodulation of AM signals. We're going to discuss a, a couple different circuits and devices that can be used and give some recommendations about how to design those. So first, let's recall the difference between our DSBSC and our AM signals. So in our DSBSC, right, we do not add any of this ec extra carrier wave. Right? There's none of this extra carrier wave with a constant amplitude. Um, in AM, we do have this. We've added this extra carrier. And for the AM schemes, it's, it's clear that coherent modulation could work. And it, we know that it could work because they both these terms right, have this uh, cosine omega C wave. And based on what we saw for DSBSC, we do know that if we could somehow right, take this AM wave and then at our receiver, multiply it again by some term like this with our carrier frequency. Yeah, we do know from what we saw that that could give us our original message back. Uh, however, we did add this term, right? We added this term out here in the front for a reason. And we chose these criteria when we added it. We said that our A should be large enough so that A plus the message keeps the message larger than zero at all times. And we should also make sure that the frequency, the carrier frequency that we've selected is much larger than the bandwidth of our original message. So considering this first, this first criteria, if this is held, it's going to keep our mu between zero and one, where the closer we get to one, this means that we've barely We've just barely lifted this message above zero. And when we're when our mu is close to zero, this means that A uh, has become a very large term and you may be spending a lot of money on a lot of extra A. So if, if we hold these, we'll have a mu that's within our acceptable range. Our modulation index will be between zero and one. So for our, our waves, let's consider this. So let's consider two ways of recovering our original message, knowing that we've completed our um, amplitude modulation by selecting these two criteria properly. So let's make sure that we're holding this index correct and that we've also selected a large bandwidth. And once we've done that, let's see two different devices that can be used to perform the demodulation. The first is a rectifier. In this rectifier circuit, we're going to have our amplitude modulated signal entering on this side. So over here, right, we have some amplitude modulated signal that's entering here. And the first thing it goes through is it goes through this diode in series with the resistor in parallel. Now, when that happens, the diode is going to introduce a switching effect. So based on this carrier, right, this diode is sometimes going to be uh, on and sometimes it's off, right? So sometimes, depending on the carrier wave, right, this is going to bias back and forth, acting like a switch, right? So this diode is going to introduce a switching component that allows some parts of this signal through, but some parts uh, it's not going to. It's going to act like an open circuit. 
So the diode introduces that signal, and now we should consider what the voltage here looks like. So after this diode that introduces a switching component, and the switching components had some Fourier series that we've discussed in previous videos. So we've introduced a switching component, and we applied the switching component to our amplitude modulation, and now we should think about, okay, what did that do? What is that signal? What is this new signal voltage going to look like after we've passed through the diode? So we're going to take our AM signal here, and we're going to switch it back and forth real quick, which introduces this Fourier series um, with, that we've discussed in the past, and that's going to be this WT. Right, so we take our signal, switch it back and forth a bit, and we're going to call that VR, the voltage past the rectifier. Now, this is going to get pretty mathy, but bear with me, and I'll try to point you out to how this is going to go. So first, right, we have this signal, and we're going to substitute our AM signal right in. So now inside of these curly braces, we've put in our AM signal. Now we have our AM signal, and we've now put in are we've substituted in this Fourier series here with a bunch of its terms. And recall, right, this is just going to keep going until n approaches infinity. And so I've just written the first three terms here. You can go back to the previous videos if you want to see what some of the other terms would look like. So we've substituted these in. Now we have two signals being multiplied against each other. And we're starting to see that there's a whole bunch of these cosine waves uh, at our carrier frequency. All right. So now let's uh, distribute this 2 over pi throughout this. OK, so we are distributing the, these pi terms through. Going on to the next one, now let's start multiplying this. Right? Let's start multiplying our AM message. Right? This is our phi AM. Let's start multiplying it by each term. OK, so that first one, it's going to give us a term here where we're just multiplied by this 1 half. The second term, now we've, we're going to have this cosine term being multiplied by another cosine term. So that's where these two cosines come from. And then for the third term, right, we have a cosine 3 omega c gets it multiplied here. So now we have cosine, cosine 3 omega t. Of course, it's getting quite large, so I'm not going to write any more out here. And in the next video, we're going to continue this um, by seeing what that voltage past the rectifier is going to look like.